This video talks about a high-level security management center architecture and also shows a live demonstration. The security management center is composed of two elements, the management server, the log server, and an optional web portal server. The management server is the central component for system administration. You can access to the management server through the management client. All the administration and configuration tasks are performed through here. The management server has an embedded database where all configuration information for next generation firewall and other system components are stored. Next generation firewall and other appliances communicate with the management server and the log server. All the system communications are TLS protected with the certificate based authentication. Management client is a tool for all day to day configuration, upgrades, and management tasks. The management clients do not connect to the devices directly. All commands and configuration changes are relayed through the management server. The clients also connect to the log servers to fetch log entries for administrators. A large number of management clients can be deployed anywhere in the network. The web portal server is an optional component that provides read-only access to log data, reports, and policy snapshots. Web Portal is a web-based interface that users with Web Portal accounts can access through a web browser. Centralized management architecture allows configuration, real-time monitoring, logging, status information, alerts, reports, updates, and upgrades, basically everything you need for hundreds of firewalls, regardless of their physical location, all happens within a shared single SMC console. The management server is usually positioned on a central site at the corporate headquarters or data center, from where it can reach all other system elements. Administrators from different sites can connect to this management server and log servers over the network using an encrypted connection. We recommend using the same management server for all your security nodes. One management server can manage up to 2,000 nodes also, additional log servers can be added to increase scalability. High availability option is supported for both management and log servers. An administrator or a defined user will open a Java-based management client and connect to the Security Management Center. The short name for Security Management Center is SMC. Now let's see a technical demonstration of Security Management Center. The toolbar icons provide shortcuts to the most important views like configuration, system status, overview, and logs. The new tab provides shortcuts to pretty much all the functions of SMC. You can go to configuring firewalls, VPN, routing, etc. by just one click. You can also go to logs, reporting, status, etc. by a single click as well. You can also bookmark the functions which you use frequently. Help is accessible by clicking F1. You can also download and install the help menu locally. The system status view provides the operating and connectivity status of monitored devices. All configured devices that you monitor are shown on the left in a tree hierarchy. We have multiple next generation firewalls, servers, VPN gateways, and VPNs in this scenario. The right side shows the summary of system status. The right bottom part shows the details of a selected element or details of any single device. Configuring a firewall is easy. Right click the firewall element, new and single firewall. You can configure several single firewall elements at once using multiple single firewalls wizard. Let's edit the firewall we have to see the configuration. Type the firewall name and select the log server which will receive the data from this firewall. We have a DNS IP address to resolve server names. Also enter the proof of serial code that is provided for each firewall. To route traffic through the firewall, you must define at least two physical network interfaces. Click on Add New Physical Interface. You will add an IP4 or IP6 IP address to this interface. 
Let's add a license to this firewall. We open a new tab, go to Administration, All Licenses. Once you have a license, you right click on All Licenses and add the license through Install Licenses. The license will automatically bind to a firewall based on the POS code which we added in the firewall configuration. You will have to add a policy for the license to get active. For an appliance that is not POS bound, licenses will have to be bound manually to its corresponding firewall engine. To complete the firewall configuration, we save the initial configuration and transfer it to the firewall by uploading a policy. The one-time password is needed to establish a connection with the management server. We select the policy and click OK. Remember, we have just configured the firewall on the management center. We haven't transferred the policy to the firewall yet. Next steps would be to connect to the next generation firewall from CLI and configure all the basic firewall engine settings to establish a connection with this management center. Please refer to the next generation firewall admin guide to view these settings. Once the initial contact has been made, the next generation firewall will be fully managed from SMC. The full firewall configuration will be received during the first policy installation. Right click on the firewall configuration and we install the policy. We select the policy from here. The policy name is Santa Clara. Our target is firewall first on the left and we click OK. We can see the policy being uploaded. This policy pushes all the config and the rules to the target firewall. Configuring management server and a log server is pretty easy. Right click a server element, new, and either log server or management server, authentication server or web portal server based on your needs. Let's see the management server configuration. Right click properties, name of the management server, IP address, the log server that the management server will talk to and the authentication method. Let's see the log server properties name of the log server, IP address, and the default contact address. You can also configure multiple log servers for high availability. For VPN configuration, please refer to the Next Generation Firewall Design Guide. We have site-to-site -site and client-to-site VPN configuration. Let's look at a firewall policy. We open a new tab, Security Engine, go to Policies, Firewall policies and let's open a Santa Clara policy. These are all the rules that are configured for the Santa Clara policy. Rule 15.3 and Rule 15.4 are configured for site to site VPN. User based rules are configured for application control use case, which is discussed in the next generation firewall design guide. Rule 15.13 is configured for client to site VPN connectivity. You can also upload a policy to the firewall with just one click. Select the policy, Santa Clara, select the target firewall. Let's validate the policy before uploading it and click OK. We can see the policy has been uploaded to the firewall without any red flags. The logs can be easily viewed by clicking on the log tab. You can double click on a connection to view more details. One of my favorite features for troubleshooting is right click a connection and view rule. Right click and view rule. This takes us exactly to the firewall rule that is allowing or discarding a connection. You can also create or terminate a connection by creating a rule straight from the logs. You can right click and if you want to allow this connection, we can create a rule by permitting a connection.
This video shows us how easy it is to configure and manage all your appliances through one single SMC console. Thank you.